Hey, hey, everybody. How are you doing? Lecture number three is now in the books, and that puts a little capstone on the first three lessons, uh, lectures for the for the semester. And it feels good. It feels good to get that done. It feels good to get it done ahead of time. Uh, tonight's lecture is a little bit of a marathon. I think I went over. Uh, I think I went over one hour and twenty minutes. So you may want to break it up and and uh, kind of take me in some doses. You know. Um, Oh, the picture. The picture is a place I visited many, many years ago. It's uh, it's a place called, don't laugh, Corona Arch. No, I know. I, when I was scrolling through pictures of something I wanted to put up for you guys, I saw it and I'm like, oh, Corona Arch. How am I not going to put Corona Arch up? Um, beautiful, magical place. Long hike, very, very hot. But uh yeah, it was it was a it was a really really good day. Um, enjoy the lecture. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a break uh, because I don't know, exactly know when that second set of lectures is going to come out. This is the the first set, so I'm I'm, I'm hoping that that you'll have three lectures uh, ready ready to go, and that will kind of set you up for for at least a week. Um, I'm going to keep working here. Uh, so uh, hopefully you'll you'll have the sets coming out one one after another. Uh, take care, guys. Have a great uh, have a great uh, week. Uh, I I said it at the very end of this lecture, but I'll say it at the beginning of the, at the lecture. Uh, you have to start. You have to start working. You have to start writing after after this lecture is uh, is done. You have all the tools that you need in order to to finish your your section one. So enjoy. I will see you guys in. Uh, Maybe about a week or so. On tap for tonight, um, we have a variety of, of things that we're going to be we're going to be exploring, and tonight's uh, tonight's uh, or I should say lecture number three is a, is a kind of an important lecture, if for no other reason because by the end of it you'll have everything that you need in order to complete section uh, number one, which is your your first assignment, the first section of your of your thesis. So we have a lot, a lot of little things that we're we're going to we're going to tie up here uh, over the next hour or so. Uh, the first one is we're going to create some research specific vocabulary for for you to be using, uh, meaning that that every 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 research project has specific vocabulary. We're going to be exploring some of that some of that tonight. Uh, the next the next thing that that's going to be really important is we're going to develop a a working I should say two working hypotheses. And as part of that, you're going to begin to discover uh, what your independent and dependent variable are. So that will be the next kind of stepping stone in, in the process of getting you ready for, for section number two. Uh, I don't know if you've uh, heard the other lectures, but if you have, you know that you have a literature review that's uh, that's due as part of section one. So in order to in order to wrap up that part of that part of the semester, uh, I want to show you a uh, a model a demonstration of how to go into Brooklyn College uh, Library into their online databases and extracting full text articles from from there. And finally, uh, I want to provide a, a couple of different writing models and some, some ideas of, of how to write your, your lit literature review. So without further ado, let's go. Just so that you could hear it here as we begin this, uh, this new set of slides, uh, this is going to be what you're, what you're going to need um, for, your, for your literature review. So we'll start with the gathering of electronic resources and then we'll move on to the, the model, the, the writing model side of it, okay? So before we jump into the demo and the little twist that I spoke about in the, in the last slide, Let's talk about what, what makes a good article, or I should say, what makes an article worthy for, for it to be chosen for your, for your literature review. So just starting from the top and kind of going downwards, uh, the, article, the article that you're going to choose to some degree has to tell you something about, about your topic <clears throat> excuse me, that, that, you, that, you, that you don't know, something that's novel, something that's different, something that's, that, that's interesting to you. Uh, we're all smart people. We all know a lot of stuff about about education and about pedagogy and everything related to you know to our classrooms. So 
the the article can't just be basic basic things. Uh, for example, um, uh, the Reading Teacher is a publication that's uh, that's written by teachers for teachers, and they're cute little articles, and you know a lot of them are, are good uh, are good reading for for quiet afternoon or whatever. So. One of the things I notice about about those particular articles is that a lot of the stuff that 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 I read in in that particular publication is stuff that I kind of already know. It's not something that's maybe in the forefront of my thinking at all times, but it's stuff that when when I when I read about it, I'm not I'm not I, I don't tend to ponder what what it is that they're saying. It's it's more just uh, has has more entertainment value than than research value. So one of the things that a good article will will do off the bat is it, it's going to engage you intellectually as opposed to just simply entertaining you with uh, with very basic facts. It should have some some sort of substance to it. Uh, beyond that, uh, if you if you notice that that the article shares a common problem statement. If you notice that maybe the solution or the treatment or the intervention, all those uh, synony synonyms that we've been using this uh, this lecture, if the article has some of those, you know what? It's probably a good article that that you could that you could certainly you could certainly explore. The last one doesn't apply to you, but I left it in there just for education's sake. Uh, sometimes a good article uh, will have a very similar methodology, meaning that the way that they propose their their research be done is kind of similar to to the to the way that you're proposing it now obviously i, I don't know if i don't know if you're going to necessarily come across any uh any articles that are proposing sim something similar to you at the at this juncture but i'll leave it in there just in case this is by no means an exhaustive list there there's just a ton of things that would make a, a good uh you know make an article uh, good for you and for for your lit review um, if you ask me, if it engages me intellectually and makes me think and stimulates me to kind of wonder about other th other parts of my research, chances are that's that's something that 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 I want to hold on to. Now, all of those uh, bullet points that that we just did in the last slide. It, all of them don't have to be present in an article in order for you to choose it. In fact, it could just be one of them, one of the bullet points or two of the bullet points, but yet you feel that there's a very strong connection to your, to your research, uh, your, 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 your personal research. This is important, and I'll tell you why. Because a big part of the literature review is going to ask you to connect what you've read to what it is that you're doing. If you if you have that connection already available from from the beginning, from from the initial reading of it, it makes your writing that much easier to to perform. So have that in mind. If if you have that connection, hold on to it. Be able to describe it. Be able to write to it, and then take it with you into into your writing for the lit review. Let's talk about the demo real quick. Hey everybody, in the time that it took to change that slide, I had a good night's rest. I participated in three IP meetings via Microsoft Teams, which is uh, kind of interesting. Um, put in a full day's worth of work, answered about 700 emails, but don't worry, now you have my undivided attention. So let's keep going. Similar to the similar to the demo slide uh, for for Eb, for ProQuest and EBSCO, that's uh, kind of like a quick reference. I, I did that for for this too. Uh, if you if you're able to kind of skim through the article a little bit and use this reference guide, once again, I think that you'll you'll find value in in uh, in having both of them available to you. The one thing that I do that I do want to point out is the fact that many times. The comments that I get, uh, you know, in lecture, in in uh, campus lecture, is uh, you know, Perez, I, I can't find any articles that that deal with my topic, or I can't find any articles that that are that are closely matched to my topic. And my answer is always the same. Uh, bullet point number two: you don't have to, you don't necessarily have to have the entire article. You know, the the title doesn't have to have every word that you're looking for. Um, 
that specifically relates to your topic or your intervention or whatever aspect that that you're looking to show with uh, with this with this particular article. Uh, instead, sometimes it could just be a few paragraphs that that give you enough information to to go from. The the difference here between doing that and just writing from the abstract is that if you just take five ten minutes to skim through and go through that process that that I'm I'm hoping that you saw with the articles on Blackboard, you get just that little bit of extra information that makes your literature review more more powerful. Lord knows. Many, many literature reviews have been written from abstracts alone, but it's so easy to spot an abstract review. Um, not that I will or won't, but if you if you have the five minutes to just open up the actual article and, and kind of skim through it and, and get that, that little bit of extra information, it'll make your writing that much easier and that much more, that much more authorita authoritarian. Uh, in, 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 in every in every possible way uh, some other things to, to kind of look out for is uh, as you as you read you're, you're, you're definitely going to get more keywords and phrases that you could you could use for further searches the the keywords and phrases that we did at the very beginning of this um, at the beginning of this lecture uh, is is one aspect of it but the the articles that you're going to be finding and reading are going to teach you another level of understanding in in regard to your your topic. Uh, the bibliography that that your articles have do a lot of the work for you. So if you see something interesting that some other author has said, go into that bibliography, find that find that author, find that article, pop that into ProQuest, and get that next level of. Uh, of article for yourself, that, that that next level of research for yourself, so that you could build one one write up after what you could build one write up upon another one. Under the course document section of Blackboard, uh, probably right underneath this video, what I did was I put two articles. Uh, I put two PDF articles that I, I found that I found over the years that that really exemplify uh, the type of research that you're that you're going to be reading. I'm not going to talk about it here because I think it's uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. So if you if you open up those articles and you you see like the highlight and the like the little uh, the little orange the little orange circle right there in the middle. If you if you kind of uh, put the cursor right over it, what you'll do is wh what you'll get is uh, some comments that I have on each individual part of your each individual part of of the article and the purpose that I found in that article. What I wanted to do was I wanted to give you kind of like an authentic type of reading of when I read when I read through them, uh, what I was looking for as part of uh, as part of my reading. Now, I'll be honest, I didn't read the all of these articles and, and neither should you. What you should be doing is you should be kind of like skimming, skimming through them in order to find the salient information. I have a slide next that 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 breaks it down for you just uh, just a little further. But if you if you want to get the kind of like the real feel to it, uh, go ahead, open up the uh, open up those uh, PDF articles, and uh, you could take a look at what I learned from from each of those individual each of those individual highlights. I'm hoping that by by reading my thoughts on on those sections, you'll you'll begin to see kind of like the thought process that I took when when reading those articles and how you don't have to read all 17 pages in order to in order to get enough information in order to write a, a literature review I'll leave it there oh yeah I went there the title of this slide is an old school emoji. So I'm going to sound like my father here real quick. And I'm going to tell you that when I was growing up, we didn't have emojis. We actually had to sit there and make our own emojis. In this case, it's a sad face emoji. Because despite my sincerest efforts, I couldn't figure out how to insert a video, meaning 
a screen recording of me using the BC library into this video which you're watching now and Lord knows I spent hours trying to find different ways of doing it so um, I kind of went I kind of went old school like my like my emoji like my sad face emoji um, what I did was um, I I had a I had an old video I had an old video that I had uh, that I had recorded for for a different class and and I think at the time I had I had to miss the class for for whatever reason so instead of just canceling class I I put it on uh, I put it on YouTube so this was back in in 2018 so it's not that old and nothing has changed uh, since then. So it is, it is a little bit of an older video. Um, it will give you an idea of how to go on to onto BC Library. It's it's a little bit of a, of a lengthy video because it had to stand it had to stand alone. So I kind of uh, stretched it out a little bit. So it's about half an hour. It actually really is. I, I actually looked at it before before recording this slide. At least uh, some parts of it. It, it is very detailed and, and very comprehensive. So if you if you do want to get an idea of um, of what I consider to be the most effective way of getting uh, of getting research articles from EBSCO and ProQuest, uh, that is the video for you. Uh, you may want to kind of skip through it a little bit just to get the pieces that that you do that you want and and that you need. Uh, I'm not going to call that I'm not going to call that supplemental link video number four because people will get confused between that and lecture number four. I'll just give it some other name, probably supplemental link to lecture three, which uh, this is, and uh, we'll we'll kind of go from there. Sad face. I like figuring things out. Because I am a highly effective teacher and professor, for that matter, um, what I did was I put, um, I took all the different, uh, I took all the different kind of bullet points from from that half an hour lecture, the supplemental video, and I put it onto one slide. If you if you've seen any part of the video and you kind of skim through it a little bit, this uh, demo will help will help you. If you're just looking at it on its own without watching the other video, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how effective it will be, but between the two, I think it will. Um, I think it'll, it'll certainly it, it'll certainly help you manage uh, the the it'll certainly help you manage the the task that that you have to do in order to get your your five your five articles from from uh, somewhere online. We are going to head into this trite now, which means that your demo is over. If you've seen the video, awesome. If you haven't, go check it out. Um, it will also be my last slide for the evening because the caffeine has finally kicked out and the hunger has kicked in. Um, your trite now is five articles. You gotta get the you gotta get the five articles. There's no there's kind of no other way around it. Um, Remember that some of the articles uh, will have the characteristics characteristics mentioned in the in the other slides. Uh, bullet point number three is an interesting one. Um, I don't know how much I could explain it right now, but um, I'm going to throw it out there. See how see how it sits with you. Uh, you're you're going to come across two different two different types of articles. You're going to come across informational articles. And you're also going to come across research articles. Uh, research articles, you'll know that they're research-based because they have some sort of intervention, they have data, they have uh, results. Whereas informational articles is basically uh, basically a a well-written a well-written article that that only has that only has non non-researched information, good information, you know, stuff that that you can you can certainly use. Uh, what I'd like for you to do is try to find a mixture of both with your with your five. Uh, the right way of doing it is to find only research uh, articles, uh, but I know that's that's really not realistic, especially especially during the summer. Um, so see if you could find a, a little mix of, of both. You know, three informational, two research uh, would be a good uh, would be a good number. And it's, it's good for you to to learn how to how to read not only the not only the informational article but also the research article. Um, most of the times I say try it now or don't try it now. I'll never know. I would say try this now. Um, it's there's a certain muscle memory that 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 gets developed uh, when you when you go on to EBSCO or ProQuest. Uh, you know the way the model the way the model had shown you, and uh, where to click, how to click, um, how to go about how to go about that those processes. 
Um, so I would definitely suggest the 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 try it now. Uh, I am out of here. Have a great night evening. Have a great evening. Um, I will see you on the next slide, hopefully very very shortly. So as we look to wrapping up this lecture and um, wrapping up the information that you need to write section one, I wanted to give you a couple of models for actually writing up the literature review. Now that you know, hopefully, how to find the articles uh, online through uh, the BC Library, uh, I want to kind of show you how, how some of the different ideas of how you could write up these articles in the, in the easiest and most effective way. I just love when I say when I say in the slide before what I have in the slide afterwards. <laughs> so yeah, the next set of slides are going to help you have a well organized uh, well organized literature review. And um, please remember, uh, the model is for all five for all five write ups that you're going to be responsible for. You're going to have five five write ups. I'm not going to spend too much time on this particular slide. Uh, this is a repeated slide from from lecture number two, when I was going over the format for for section one. Uh, this was uh, this was subheading number five. If you remember, subheading one through four had different uh, had different ideas and different intentions. If you're not sure about subheadings one through four, please go back and uh, and take a look at lecture number two. So this is going to be subheading number five, and this is your the last the last subheading for for section one. Uh, I'll let you kind of read that read that on your own because it is a a bit of a repeat. Off the bat, this is a, another checklist, not bullet points. It's a checklist. You can even take a look at this. You can even look at this checklist and say. Each one of these points could very much match one, two, maybe three sentences within your within your write up. I like to give you a systematic approach for how to do these these small tasks because I often find that a repeated task is much faster than doing an asynchronous task. So if you can get into the mode of going through this checklist, whether it's this or the hypotheses, if you could do it over and over again, in essence, not only do you learn how to do it really, really well, but it tends to go a lot faster than if you do, uh, you know, individual parts. So let's take a look at, at each one of these um, in a little more in a little more depth. Uh, oh, first off, at the, at the very, very top, you're going to get two different two different models. One is going to be for an experimental, which is this one. So an experimental research synopsis or uh, write-up is for an article that that has uh, that has research done as part of the uh, as part of the article. If you remember, there was two types of articles. One is experimental uh, or research-based, and the other one is going to be information-based. So this is the experimental one. Let's take a look. Uh, so the first one, the first uh, box. It, you have to connect to to something to something before it, either a previous article or something that you've said earlier. And it's when you begin when you begin a write up by connecting to something beforehand. It gives the reader an idea of where we came from, and by definition, where where we're where we're going to go. One sentence will will absolutely cover that. Um, another thing that it does for you is if you don't have if you don't have that connection, if you don't have that link between between the two articles, your articles begin to sound very robotic, one after the other, and, and we don't want that. We kind of want it to to flow. We want it to have like an engaging uh, an engaging feel to it. So definitely make that connection. Uh, cite article correctly. I have um, I, I do have I do have some slides at the end of this of of how to cite how to cite articles. Uh, correctly, there's really only two that that you're really probably going to be using, maybe three, uh, but we'll talk about those uh, at, at the end. So one of the places that you could cite the article correctly is at at the beginning of your of your write up. If you kind of like pan down to the very very bottom, you'll see cite correctly again. You don't have to cite twice. You have the option of either citing at the beginning of your write up or at the end of your, your write up, not both. 
all you have to do is uh, all you have to do is one. Um, uh, hold on, let me get that. So I have a rule: if um, if I'm more than two minutes into a slide and something interrupts it, there's no way I'm starting again. But on a on a positive note, I have pre qualified for a mortgage <laughs> because that was that's what the phone call was. One thing about the uh, one thing about the pandemic is that the uh, the co the cold calls have uh, have magically vanished. Uh, I guess they're they're with the reopening of the economy, they're uh, they're they're back at it here. Even though in New York we are still on lockdown. Anyway, uh, back at it here. Um, yeah, so cite article correctly. You have your choices. Okay, good. Uh, next one, a specific aspect of your of your topic. Remember when I said that that an article that you choose in all likelihood is not going to be, you know, perfectly aligned with, with what it is that you're reading in the, in the article. So what aspect of your topic is the, is the article, is the article covering? Um, a sample and population. Remember, this is an experiment that they did, so they will have a sample and population. Hopefully that sample and population will kind of match yours. It, it won't always. And one of the questions I often get asked is, um, you know, Perez, the article the article is for early elementary school, but my sample is going to be is going to be uh, high school, let's say. Uh, can I use it? And the short answer <clears throat> the short answer is yes. You, you can you can use it as long as you're able to explain um, the kind of like the the, the the connection between the two. So, so <clears throat> sometimes good pedagogy is good pedagogy, whether it's, you know, elementary school, high school, or college, it, it doesn't necessarily matter. But eventually, when you get down to the, the red one down there, the connection, you will have to kind of explain it away. Um, the next bullet point is the intervention that they used, meaning what was the experiment about? Like, what was the uh, what what was it that they actually used in order to solve the the problem statement? Uh, and then finally, you can get into into the results. the The area that I'm most interested in reading about is the connection to your research. Uh, it really should be the 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 like out, out of out of the the ratio of writing between all those uh, all those boxes. And uh, in the whole, the the connection should should have the most amount of real estate in your in your writing. You have to make that connection as explicit and as clear as possible in order for me or the reader or anybody else who picks up your paper to understand why you've chosen this article and why you're pre and why you're presenting it. Don't go crazy. Just say why did you choose this article? It's 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 like a really it's like a really it's like a it seems really really easy, but for some reason, um, young research writers have a hard time with with uh, with that connection. It's not a lot of writing that that this requires, but that particular section will require a little bit of thought. Um, and then again, you have the last box, which is uh, cite correctly at the end or at the beginning. So let's take a look at a actual model. I'm not going to read the entire model to you, and as a matter of fact, I honestly I don't I don't even really care about the content. I more want you to see how how the uh, how the author went went ahead and you know put all the the different pieces into a nice into a nice write up. So this particular model has two paragraphs. The next one will have a single paragraph, but this one has two. And let's go through them. So let's get some color here. You can see that the first citation is. Uh, the first option where you could cite at the very beginning of your of your write up and that is an example of of how of how to cite at the at the beginning which is the author's names uh, along with the year in parentheses moving right along what type of students were they uh, were they looking at uh, they were looking at students with uh, with ASD and um, and also typically developing children I'm going to skip down. Oh, uh, sorry. One more, one more point there. It was uh, 62 preschool age children. Uh, don't forget to put the, the, their grade or their or their age something to that something to that degree, just so you, you can get an idea. Um, I'm only highlighting some of the little, you know, kind of key points there. If you'll notice, there's there's other writing that that revolves around it, just to kind of fill in the blanks. So I'm not going to read each one of them, but just so you can see how it uh, how it pans out. What were they? What were they using? What were they? You know, what was their? What was their intervention? In this case, they were using the Winnie Dunn's sensory profile. 
not even really sure what that is. It doesn't really matter. But you know that they were using that as their as part of their as part of their intervention. You could already start to see how that checklist just tick 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 check 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 write it right in the sentences. Uh, you know, kind of piece in the uh, piece in the uh, the the blanks in between them. And let's take a look at that second paragraph. This one will have some bigger chunks of uh, of highlights here, and you can see um, in the you can see in the top half of the of the model that uh, that the results were were definitely were definitely mentioned and and demonstrated, and then for me the the biggest key there is how it relates to to my to my research. In this case, the researcher just because I, I remember I remember who who wrote this, and she was a very talented researcher. Um, I think, I think she was, uh, I think she was several years ago in one, one of my classes. So, uh, she was doing, she was doing, um, she was doing a, uh, uh, a research project on multisensory, a multisensory, uh, education for students uh, on the, uh, autistic spectrum disorder, ASD. And part of her, part of her writing was to show that sensory processing, um, not only is difficult for for students on the uh, on the spectrum, but also uh, that there's different sensory remedies that maybe we haven't explored yet. And of course, she went on to explore those uh, those sensory those that sensory diet for for her students. That was the connection for her. Uh, as far as real estate, you can see that that the connection takes up a, a good part of that that second paragraph. And uh, she she dedicates a good two or three sentences uh, just to really make sure that the reader understands what that connection is. Last but certainly not least, you have a different way of a different way of citing the work, which is uh, which is at the very end. And this one looks a little bit different. Uh, the authors are on the inside of the parentheses, separated by a comma, and then the and then the year. Remember, you're going to choose one of those ways of cite citing, not both, please. Um, that is it as far as the experimental. Let's look at the instructional. Um, the um, yeah, the the um, informational article. So I think this is the one that you're going to be mostly working within. Hopefully, you will have the opportunity to write up a couple of, of uh, research-based articles. But I have a feeling, for the most part, many of your articles are going to be informational in in nature. So let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at this um, uh, this checklist. So it starts off the same, where you're going to connect to the previous article because you can't have that that robotic type of uh, type of uh, lit literature review. They have to kind of flow together. And again, you'll have that cite article correctly both at the beginning or at the end. That's not, that's not going to change. Also, that's not going to change. What aspect of your topic is, is this article discussing? <clears throat> Chances are the article is not going to be discussing every single part of your topic. So choose the one that, that, that choose the aspect of your article, choose the aspect of your research that that the article is uh, most closely related to. So these middle two uh, important details and extension are where it's going to deviate uh, from the from the research based articles. And the important details and the and the extension are they kind of go kind of go hand in hand. And what it means to say is that Beyond just a basic type of information uh, regarding your regarding your topic or regard, regarding the aspect that you're that you're covering with this article, what else is there? What's new? What's novel? What what have you learned that you could that you can take from what you have said previously and now extend it further in order to in order to add depth to your to your learning. Uh, and then, of course, by extension, you're adding depth to the reader's information that that they're that they're receiving. Uh, there's a lot that you could do there. There's there's a little bit of flexibility, but I would spend some time on on that on those uh, on those on those boxes, just to make sure that that you're getting a good bit of information there. That connection also will not change, uh, even though you have a lot of good details and you have a lot of good information. 
how does it relate to your how does it relate to your research specifically how does it impact your research and and to what degree so that that will not change and then of course you have the the site at the at the end let's take a look at a real life model for this model i condensed it into um, I condensed it into a single paragraph just uh, for time's sake I do think that two paragraph write-up actually works better than the, than the one paragraph and at face value you're gonna say I'm not writing an extra paragraph if I don't have to but to some degree it's a lot easier to it's a, sometimes it's easier to get the information uh, over a longer over a longer you know stretch than it is to try to squeeze it all into into a single into a single dense paragraph so um, you definitely want to make those paragraphs nice and short. Anyway, I did the, I did the one paragraph variety here just uh, just to save some time, and uh, you can you can kind of see the the color the color coding uh, just a, just a little bit. Uh, you have that citation to begin with. You have the specific aspect that you uh, that the article is covering that is uh, similar to that similar to your your own. You have um, the the information that's uh, that's particular for for you, and then finally in red, uh, you have that that strong connection. Uh, you could see that this is the same uh, this is the same author, meaning that we're still talking about the the sensory and the and the students with uh, with uh, that have been diagnosed with ASD. So that that kind of you, you'll see that that theme very much very much continue here. Those past two models were in some ways very rudimentary, meaning that they were one model, one write-up for one author. I wonder though, I should say I wondered in the past, is there a way to write a, to write a, a effective write-up, a, a synopsis for your literature review, but instead of just doing a single, a single article for every write-up, if we can now begin to mix and match and blend in multiple articles into into a single write-up i call that integrated writing i'm sure i didn't invent that but i haven't seen it necessarily mentioned anywhere else um so i kind of gave it a title uh, take a look at let's take a look at some information and then we'll we'll look at a model at the at the end of it So one of the things that, that I found difficult about this idea about integrated writing is that students were often asking me, um, how, do I, how do I link the articles? Or how do I know that two or three articles kind of go together? So this is my slide attempting to answer that question. Um, if, you have a, if you have a couple of articles, uh, you know, two or, or more articles, and they have a simple, similar concept or, or idea, that uh, that you find interesting, or you find uh, you find engaging, or that you can learn something from. Uh, that's probably the best way to to choose two articles and and kind of bring them bring them together. If they if two articles or three articles have a very similar finding, it's also a very effective way of of choosing the the two articles and writing to those uh, to those findings. Methodology and the way that they went about doing their 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 research. Uh, can get a little bit tricky, so you may want to leave that out for now. But just in case, if you do find two research articles that share a similar methodology, it's something that you can, you definitely can mention as part of your as part of your writing. Uh, not an exhaustive list again. If there's any other kind of connection that you can that you can think of and you can explain it in your writing, by all means, go with it and and run with it. Uh, over the years, I do have to say though, I find I find when when students are able to integrate their writing between several authors, it um, it very much it very much um, adds a level of interest that when it's one one write up one author it just doesn't hold. That being said, though, one author one write up is the the easiest is the easiest way of doing it, and if that's the way that you're choosing to do it. Uh, you're you're not going to be penalized on on points or anything like that. You may want to try it this way just to explore different ways of of doing things. You know, this is about you know, like learning and stuff. <laughs>
I wanted to give you a very quick, a very quick, simple system with the uh, with the checklist, the same way as I did the others. Uh, this one is is a lot more rudimentary. Uh, the other ones, the same way that the other ones, you have to cite and, and all that good stuff. That all holds true, but I wanted to show you these in addition to to the other to the other bullet points. Uh, you're definitely going to talk about what what the what the articles have have in common. Um, you could also you could also extend and add details about that common information. So if one one author has a certain set of details and then the second one extends those details, that's a really nice way of putting that information kind of uh, kind of back back to back. Uh, and then instead of doing the, the commonalities, which you start off with, you could even get into some divergent um, some divergent pieces of uh, of research that maybe maybe that that they don't necessarily have those in uh, in common. However, you go about doing that integrated writing, though, please. The one thing that you cannot forget is your the connection to your research. I know I keep harping on it, harping on it, and I keep saying it over and over again. But you you'll be surprised how a very well written and very well formulated uh, literature review just goes awry when when that the connections are not established it just it just becomes very it just becomes very very uh detached from the context with with which you're hoping to um with which you're hoping to create so in this model you you have the three colors which represent the the three different sections and I'll let you. I'll let you read. Um, I'll let you read this on on your own, only because uh, I see that I'm going on an hour and fifteen minutes. So I, I do want to wrap this up here. Uh, the one thing I will I will point out is that you'll notice that the um, that the citations are a little bit different, meaning that meaning that that the um, that the, there's multiple citations for for each individual for each individual paragraph. Um, by the way, uh, let me see if I can get this. I didn't realize this at the time, but this, uh, this young lady, uh, Professor Steinberg actually taught at Brooklyn college. She hired me, uh, way back 15 years ago. So, um, it was kind of funny that, that, that this, uh, that this popped up in, in one of my students, uh, research papers. And it wasn't until I was looking at the, at the actual article um, because I had recognized the name, that I realized that it was uh, Shirley Steinberg, which was which was kind of cool. Um, another thing to another thing to note is that uh, this is a different author at the time at the time that the first author was writing. I hadn't uh, I hadn't made integrated writing a part of my a part of my lecture, so um, it is a different author. But it does demonstrate a, a lot of what it is that that you need, do need to have with the uh, with the integrative writing model. Um, like I said, try it. Give it a shot. Uh, worst comes to worst, you 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 know you start it and then you you abandon it. But you all smart people, you'll be able to you'll be able to breeze through. So we've been talking about the citation page. Um, I think I'm gonna have to do another. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna have to do another another set of citation slides. But um, I'm just gonna do these real quick, just so you have it in mind. I also wanted to put it here. You know, a lot of times. Uh, citations are are easiest when when you're in the middle of uh, of doing your literature review. If you leave it towards the end, it, it just gets it just gets harder. It just gets harder and harder. And there there are points associated with the citation page. So I'll show you here now, and then um, and then maybe we'll do it again. Uh, you know, towards the towards the middle of the uh, of the lecture sequence. Uh, oh, another thing. Uh, on that on that other video on the supplemental video that shows you how to use uh, ProQuest EBSCO, um, I'm almost positive, and I didn't see it. I'll have to I'll have to verify it. But there is a function, uh, certainly within ProQuest, where you could uh, when when you choose a where where you choose a um, an article, that it allows you to make the citation in the correct format already. So. Um, if you're if you're not sure about the way that these slides look, you may want to visit that that uh, that uh, supplemental video uh, to see how how it's done through through ProQuest. For me, it's a lot easier to do it through ProQuest, but some of you may choose to do it this way.
So let's take a look at a, at a quick model here. And uh, first off the first off the bat, you'll notice that the last name goes first with the with the first initial. Your citation page, which will be um, at least five at least five articles long, maybe a little bit more, uh, should be in alphabetical order. A uh, couple more things. You'll notice that the that the title of the <clears throat> the title of the article is going to be all in lowercase. The only exception is going to be right in the middle where that colon is. So, uh, for some reason, research articles do tend to have a lot of the, a lot of colons in them. So, uh, anything after the colon, the first word is going to be uh, is going to be capitalized, but everything else is in is in lowercase, followed by a period at the end. The, the name of the journal is going to be uh, italicized and then the volume and then the page number um, are the, the volume is italicized and the page number is not. I don't know who comes up with these crazy rules but but that's the way uh, <laughs> that's the way the, the APA the APA format is uh, is is made. Uh, you also notice that the that the first that the first line, is indented all the way to the left, and then each subsequent line is indented a little bit to the right. Uh, we call that a hanging indent. I want to show you how to do it in Microsoft Word, but um, without that screen share, uh, I'm not sure exactly how to how to show it to you. Uh, maybe maybe uh, maybe in the next uh, in the next lecture in the next lecture or the lecture after, I'll uh, I'll show you some screenshots just to. Just to get it, just to get a, a little uh, demo out, out on how to do that. As far as that that um, that website there, it's uh, it's called the Owl at Purdue. Uh, Purdue, I believe, is uh, per it refers to Purdue University, not the chicken. <laughs> so, if you if you Google the Owl at Purdue, you'll you'll see uh, you'll see a pop up first. Uh, that is an active link, so you could just also click on that, and. Um, it basically has everything that you want to know about APA cite APA citation, um, everything from in text to to um, citation pages to uh, using quotes, which uh, I'm sure I'm sure some of you will uh, will choose to do. Uh, so definitely look at definitely look at that for any APA questions. Uh, if a lot of times when, when I'm correcting papers, especially the first one, uh, I will make some, some general APA notes for you. Uh, but I'm hoping that, that if you do access the website, it'll answer, you know, 90% of your questions. Yes, my fine young friends, we have arrived at the golden slide of clarity. Not a regular slide of clarity, but the golden kind. The reason for that is because if everything has gone according to plan, and even though it's several months away, uh, this lecture will be the last one that's a part of your first weeks of uh, first week upload. And at the end of uh, at the end of this little set, as long as well as your your supplemental videos for the Brooklyn College uh, website for the Brooklyn College Library website. Uh, you have everything that you need in order to write your your section your section number one, and uh, it's kind of comforting in a way that you have that kind of in your back pocket on your plate, and it's ready to go. With that being said, however, uh, you must start writing. You must start writing. Time is not on our side, and it's something that needs to get done sooner sooner rather than later. So please. If you have the propensity to procrastinate <laughs> the way that sometimes I do, um, see if you can flip the script a little bit this semester and get started uh, putting pen to paper there. Uh, with that said, if you need any kind of support, if, you, if you're stuck, if you're not sure, if you're, you're confused about uh, one or two things, if you need someone to cheer you on, uh, I will be happy to get my pom-poms out and give you uh, as much cheer as you need. David Perez 11230 is the email address that you could put any concerns into. Um, one last little piece here at the very, very bottom. Uh, it's about this time that people do start, uh, that students do start wanting to perhaps do some teleconferencing, and uh, that is also an option that is available to you. 
I am going to go record slide number one because it's, it is my favorite slide to record. And I will see you guys in the next set, lecture number four, I believe. Take care of yourselves, be well, and blessings to you.